into the profession of arms. We acknowledge the tradition of honor and for us and to inspire us still today. We would also like to thank the family and friends for their continued support that these graduates will be counting on as they serve our great nation in the years to come. This week, we have a special opportunity to recognize one additional and significant achievement demonstrating the dedication of 28 of our graduates who have completed the process of becoming citizens of the United States of America. Today's recognition is made possible by a partnership between the Department of Defense and Department of Homeland Security to allow active duty service members to become citizens under the Naturalization at Basic Training Initiative. To be eligible, a member of the Armed Forces must pass a comprehensive application process administered by the Department of Homeland Security, including a background check and personal interview to demonstrate high morale, character, and their knowledge of the English language. Applicants are also tested on U.S. history and government. When applicants take the oath of allegiance to the United States Constitution, they become American citizens. Please hold your applause until all names have been announced. The Air Force is proud to recognize Airman Mitchell Wilkinson, country of origin, United Kingdom. Airman Nayan Palma, country of origin, Brazil. Airman Xi Zin U, country of origin, South Korea. Airman Ryan Edwards, country of origin, Jamaica. Airman Prosper Misa, country of origin, Cameroon. Airman Bazel Matlib, country of origin, Ukraine. Airman Alexander Schutz, country of origin, Russia. Airman Demi Tekli Darishi, country of origin, Ethiopia. Airman Kevin Servito, country of origin, Philippines. Airman Zabata Kamal, country of origin, India. Airman Dominic Smith, country of origin, Jamaica. Airman Roberto Vico Cruz, country of origin, Peru. Airman Santiago Alvarez Duque, country of origin, Colombia. Airman Stifler Dat Ngaya, country of origin, Philippines. Airman Baya Uridia, country of origin, Georgia. Airman Cynthia Kugang, Tamina, country of origin, Cameroon. Airman Jiminia Rodriguez, country of origin, Mexico. Airman Fifi Apoko, country of origin, Togo. Airman Rebecca Bosa, country of origin, Uganda. Airman Chloe Leah Carrier, country of origin, United Kingdom. Airman Kantampon Hiridium, country of origin, Thailand. Airman Martin Delgado Nava, country of origin, Mexico. Airman Daniela Vasquez Ceridio, country of origin, Mexico. Airman Luca Barbagoa Orozco, country of origin, Mexico. Airman Janwell Garcia, country of origin, Philippines. Airman Israel Rodriguez Navarte, country of origin, Mexico. Airman E. Kang Un, country of origin, South Korea. Airman Roking Chi, country of origin, China. Ladies and gentlemen, please help us congratulate the newest citizens of the United States of America. Our newest citizens were led by their military drill and ceremonies non-commissioned officer, Tech Sergeant Paul Beatty.
Good morning. I am Master Sergeant Ariel Coleman, military training instructor, and I will be your narrator for today's ceremony. As the flights move into position, and for the safety and comfort of those around you, we ask that you refrain from entering the retreat pad and remain in your respective seating area when taking photos during the ceremony. At the conclusion of the ceremony, you may proceed onto the retreat pad after the flights are dismissed. Please be cautious when ascending and descending the bleachers. Utilize the handrails and watch for tripping, slipping, and falling hazards. Restroom facilities are located in the reception center and to the right of the flagpole. During this morning ceremony, smoking and the consumption of alcoholic beverages is not permitted. At this time, please silence all cell phones and other electronic devices. Thank you and enjoy today's ceremony. In the military, ceremonies are held to accord distinctive honors to national symbols or individuals on special occasions. These ceremonies are also used to display proficiency and state of training in a command and to promote teamwork and pride in the organization. They also contribute to the public morale by displaying symbolically the strength and unity of the military and support of the nation. All of the movements that you will observe today are known as drill. The purpose of drill is to enable a commander or non-commissioned officer, such as a military training instructor, the ability to move their units from one place to another in an orderly manner, to aid in training by instilling discipline and habits of precision in response to the leader's orders, and to provide the development of all leaders in the practice of commanding formations. To maintain the proper decorum and respect for events such as this, we ask that you abide by the following standards while you are here. First, there will be times that you will be asked to stand for the invocation, the playing of the national anthem, the Air Force song, and the reciting of the Airmen's Creed. Second, we ask that you re remain silent during these times, reflecting on the price that has been paid for our freedom. Third, we ask that you pay respect to the flag during the national anthem. Military members and veterans in uniform will stand at attention and render a salute. Civilians should stand and place their right hand over their heart. Veterans and military members not in uniform may render a salute or place their right hand over their heart. After the last note of the national anthem, you may return your hand to your side. Thank you and enjoy today's ceremony. Now marching into position. Flight 452, led by Texan Sergeant Frisco Fox. <laughs> Flight 453, led by Techno Sergeant Jessica Walker. Led by Techno Sergeant Colton Marvin. <laughs> Flight 455, led by Techno Sergeant Joshua Casey. Six, led by Technical Sergeant Sarah Fierro. Flight 
flight, or 57, led by Technical Sergeant Brian Kinnerly. Flight 458, led by Master Sergeant Cody Hopper. Flight 459, led by Technical Sergeant Nadia Cruz. Flight 462, led by Technical Sergeant Michael Proya. Flight 463, led by Technical Sergeant Denzel Miles. Flight 464, led by Master Sergeant Clarissa Hart. Flight 465, led by Technical Sergeant Jamar Hart. Flight 466, led by Technical Sergeant Miguel A. Molina. Flight 467, led by Master Sergeant Jonathan Ted Malumai. Flight 468, led by Technical Sergeant Kayla Welch. Flight 
469, led by Technical Sergeant Preston Reese. Musical support for this morning's ceremony are graduates from Flight 460 and 461, led by Technical Sergeant Sakita Williams, performing under the direction of retired Master Sergeant Samuel Johnson, Master Military Training Instructor, hometown Stratford, Connecticut. These individuals have been hand-selected to perform for today's ceremony. In addition to completing all basic military syllabus and training requirements, Drum and Bugle Corps members commit additional training hours for practice throughout their weeks of training. Their extra effort and commitment demonstrate teamwork and the Air Force's core value, service before self. With Drum and Bugle Corps performance, they honor in the long-standing tradition of live music at formal military ceremonies. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the invocation given by Chaplain Abbey. Please join me in prayer. Good and gracious God, thank you for bringing us all to this prodigious day. We are grateful for the families the spouses, the children, the friends that have gathered here this day to celebrate this milestone. For those even who are not here, we give you thanks. Maybe they are separated by miles or time, but they are with us in spirit. And some of those who wore the uniform whose shoulders these graduates now stand. We are grateful for their, pray, for their service to our nation. And we take a special pause at this moment to remember those who have given the ultimate sacrifice. We pray also for those who are on the field today. We ask, Lord, that you would watch over them, that you would keep them safe, and that you would bring them home to your families. We praise you, and we give you credit for these men and these women who have entered the actual arena, who have been marred by dust and sweat and maybe a little bit of gas. We ask that you would bolster their enthusiasm, that you would strengthen their devotion, that you would lead them in achievement, and that you would curb their errors, their failures, and their defeat, and that you will bring them to victory. We are also thankful for those who work and who are patient, the MTIs, the commanders, for those who have fed these men and women, for those who have kept them safe and healthy, continue to bless them and strengthen them in this training squadron day in and day out as they prepare men and women to defend our freedom. Now, Lord, this graduating class of airmen we pray that as they move to a new chapter of training and then on to serve our nation, for they are the future. They will lead the way. And with your help, they will not fail. And for these things, all God's children said, Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. Please be seated. Good morning, and welcome to today's basic military training graduation ceremony. We would like to introduce our distinguished guests, beginning with the host for today's ceremony, 
the deputy commander, Air Force basic military training, and 1993 graduate of basic military training, Lieutenant Colonel Alvin Schultz, Jr. From the graduating squadron, the commander, 331st Training Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Josh Harden. The senior enlisted leader, 331st Training Squadron, and 2024 graduate of basic military training, Chief Master Sergeant Demarcus Forney, accompanied by his fiance, Danielle Mabry. Although time does not permit us to introduce all of our distinguished guests, the 737 Training Group is proud to welcome each of you. We hope you enjoy today's ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, Chief Master Sergeant Forney will now come forward and address our graduating class. Good morning. All right, so first I want to start off by asking all the family and friends in attendance to look down at the formations, find your loved one right now. And while you're looking at them, I'm just going to repeat off some numbers. 55 military training instructors, five officers, 52 training days, over 800 training hours, 106 courses, 27 evals, 30 graduation requirements, and lastly, 105 degree temperature every day. Now I can imagine while you're looking at your loved ones, some of you feel extremely proud, excited, or if you were like my family, you were probably shocked that they made it. <laughs> but I want you to know that what they accomplished wouldn't have been possible without your love and your support, and thank you for that. Okay. So I also gotta give a shout out to our military training instructors. I'll tell you, throughout my time in the Air Force, you will never find a more dedicated group of professionals anywhere. So as you travel across the base, if you get the opportunity to come in contact with an MTI, I ask that you thank them. Thank them for their service, thank them for their sacrifice, but thank them for pouring everything that they have into your loved one. I can honestly say, MTIs, that I admire what you do, and you will forever have my gratitude and my thanks. And most importantly, my respect. All right, for the graduates, y'all stand here now that you've transitioned from civilians to recruits to trainees and you're prepared to take over the watch and carry the torch and continue the legacy of those that came before you understand that you're joining a team that will look to you to define the character of our air force for years to come each and every one of you has the training and the talent to be successful in fact Every morning, you recite the Airman's Creed and you adamantly proclaim that you will not fail. And we believe you. But if I'm being honest, I worry that you won't fail enough from time to time. And I know that sounds contradictory, but let me explain what I mean. All of you, at some point, will fail at something. You will suck at something. It's a fact of life. We've all been there, I've been there. But I need you to remember that being at the bottom or feeling like you hit rock bottom is a great place to build a foundation. And the foundation of every airman starts with integrity, a passion to serve, and a standard of excellence. You see, you're gonna fall and you won't always get promoted. You won't always get the job or the assignment that you want. You might get hurt, you might get ill, whatever the challenge, whatever the obstacle, no matter how hard. The airman that falls and knows how to get back up, that's the airman that will not fail. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So in the Wolf Pack, we have a scene. 
The strength of the pack is the wolf, but the strength of the wolf is the pack. As a matter of fact, Phil Jackson made that the motto when he was running the Chicago Bulls during their dynasty runs. So the strength of the pack is the wolf. Remember your why and remember who you are. Each of you all have your own individual talents and your own individual goals that you want to achieve. And that's fine. That's probably why most of you chose to serve. But it's important that you take care of yourself, continue to grow, and become the best version of you. The pack needs it, your wingmen need it, your family need it, your country needs it. But also remember that the strength of the wolf is the pack. And the pack represents family, community, and team effort. Reflect on who supported you, who got you to MIPS, who motivated you, got you to run one more lap, one more push-up, told you to get in step, pass that inspection, et cetera, et cetera. We all depend on each other to complete our mission. You all will be a part of something bigger than yourself and bigger than any one individual. Discipline yourself in teamwork. You will be amazed by how much you can accomplish when no one cares who gets the credit. So as your senior enlisted leader, I hereby acknowledge your completion of all graduation requirements and have recommended to Colonel Wilson and Chief Master Sergeant Anderson that you receive your coveted airman's coin, which signifies your transition today from trainees to airmen. Congratulations. You may proceed. At this part of the ceremony, the military training instructors will distribute the Venerable Airman's Coin and for the first time, distinct Space Force coins to our Space Force graduates. The lore of military coins has many colorful suspected origins. However, a popular story stems from World War I, where American volunteers formed flying squadrons in France during the Great War. One of the volunteers was a wealthy lieutenant who took great pride in his service and had medallions cast in bronze, with his squadron's emblem on them. He gave those medallions to every member of his unit. Not long after, one of the pilots was shot down behind enemy lines and was captured by a German patrol. The German forces confiscated the pilot's possessions except for the pilot's medallion that he wore around his neck. While in confinement in a small French village, the captured pilot took advantage of a nighttime bombardment by the Allies. He donned civilian clothes and escaped after crossing the front lines to safety. He came across a French outpost where he was initially thought to be a saboteur until he showed them his unit coin. The French forces recognized the unit emblem, and instead of any harsher treatment, he received a bottle of wine. Today, several military units have developed their own coins and specific rules for them. Many organizations give out their unit coins to recognize outstanding performances and achievements. The coins the airmen and space professionals receive today are unique in that they originate here at the gateway to the Air Force and are only given to those who complete this rigorous course of instruction. On one side of the airman's coin, the original emblem of the Air Force resides as envisioned by General Henry Hap Arnold, one of the first military aviators and later commander of the Army Air Forces in World War II. Beneath the emblem, the year 1947, the birth date of the United States Air Force, and around the rim of the coin, the core values of the Air Force, integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all we do. Inscribed on the other side of the coin is the newly recognized emblem of the Air Force, a symbol that honors the heritage of our past and represents the promise of our future. The emblem retains the core elements of the Henry Hap Arnold emblem, the Arnold wings, and the star within a circle. The modern effect of the emblem reflects our air and space force today and into the future. 
Inscribed in a half circle above the contemporary Air Force emblem is the Air Force motto, Aim high, fly, fight, win. And on the border of the coin, a reminder to all who see this is inscribed, awarded on the occasion of becoming an airman in the world's greatest Air Force. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Hardin will now come forward and address our graduating class. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the United States Air Force Basic Military Training. First, let me say thank you to all the family and friends joining us today. Seven and a half weeks ago, your loved ones departed home set on a journey into the United States Air Force. And today marks the day they officially become airmen. It's your support that's pushed these airmen to successfully complete basic military training and join the world's greatest Air Force. I'll tell you though, seven and a half weeks ago when they showed up here, they showed up with all kinds of hairstyles, different clothes, and probably the widest eyes I've ever seen. But after many countless hours and repetitions of folding their laundry, making their beds, countless hours of drill, and lots of mentorship uh, from their instructors, I'm proud to say they've made it to the end. Yep, there we go. And it is my honor to introduce the newest airman from the 331st Training Squadron as our newest airman. Wolfpack, over the last two months, your military training instructors and your section leadership have asked a lot of you. They've held you to a high standard, and your Wolfpack instructors are extremely dedicated to their craft and are the very best at what they do. So family and friends, if you will, please help me show the instructors how much we appreciate their, uh, appreciate their efforts. <laughs> the 
These Wolfpack instructors have worked tirelessly over the last two months, providing these airmen with a world-class instruction that lays a solid foundation of what it means to be an airman. Instructors, thank you. Thank you for your dedication and your tireless efforts to shaping the future of our Air Force. Tomorrow, you will raise your right hand and swear to defend the Constitution against all enemies. Today, while you're with your families and friends, think about what that means. Think about what that oath you take tomorrow, what it means to you, and what it means to your loved ones. It is an awesome responsibility. And make no mistake, no matter what your career field are, you are a warrior. You have a critical role in defending our country and enabling our leaders to meet the United States national objectives. Even if you're not at the tip of the spear, you will be a key enabler of the world's greatest Air Force. And remember, as you leave us and depart for technical training, build on that foundation your MTIs have laid out for you. Take care of your wingman and become the airman we know you can be. I won't lie, though, there will be tough days in your future, but there will also be some of the best days that you've ever had. Never forget why you volunteered to be part of this Air Force family and what it means to be a member of the Wolfpack. It's been my honor to be your first commander, and I know that you will excel throughout your career, just as you have here in the Wolfpack. I look forward to seeing you out and about within our Air Force, doing all the great things I know you're destined to accomplish. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Harden. At this time, we would like to take this opportunity to recognize basic military training's most outstanding performer, someone who demonstrated their ability to successfully navigate all assessments, testing their physical abilities, academic aptitude, and adaptability to the military environment through multiple progress checks. This airman has surpassed all others in the challenges of training and has earned the distinction of being the top graduate of this class. The top graduate is from Flight 463, Airman Gabriela Pimento. She is from Oxnard, California, and joined the Air Force to become a low master. In the stands cheering are her father, Alejandro, and mother, Cheryl. Her recruiter is Staff Sergeant Jasmine Galagos from the 146th Airlift Wing Recruiting Squadron, Oxnard, California. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as a sign of unity as our top graduate leads us through the Airman's Creed. Instructors, place your flights at attention. Please remain standing for the playing and singing of the United States Air Force song.
Congratulations on achieving this historic milestone that marks the beginning of your career. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain in your seating area. The graduates will be dismissed momentarily. Families and graduates in the Drum and Bugle Corps are asked to wait for their graduates on the north side of the west bleachers while they secure their equipment. We ask that you refrain from running onto the retreat pad and please use caution when descending the bleachers. Town Pass ends at 20 hundred hours. When dropping off graduates, please stay in your vehicle. Family members are not authorized to enter any training area. Thank you, and please enjoy your stay at the 37th Training Wing, Joint Base San Antonio, Lackland, Texas. Flight Commanders, dismiss your flights.